Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here this afternoon. I see some of you uh, are probably here uh, you know, because your professors have suggested it, you attend this session. My name is Livia Newbert, and I am the ESL, English as a Second Language Program Coordinator here on campus. This is one of four sessions that we, um, the ESL program, is putting together this spring um, to try to get our students on campus, uh, American students and international students, to understand a little bit more about America. Um, so this is our second seminar. It's on flag etiquette and respect. And we're very honored to have Sergeant William Kliegel here with us today. He is um, a third war Iraq veteran, 30 year army retired, second airborne. 82nd Airborne. 82nd Air Airborne, I'm sorry. Um, he's been with us here as a student at BCC for two years now. Uh, and he's also a former Army instructor. And um, I couldn't think of anybody better than him to give this seminar to us this afternoon. So please help me welcome Mr. Kliegel, Sergeant Kliegel. Thank you, Olivia. A lot of people think of America and they think of the U.S. flag. How many people realize the U.S. flag is United States of America? America incorporates North America, South America, and Central America. There is, between Central and North America, 41 countries. South America has 14 countries. So it would be shameful to say that America is just the United States. America encompasses a lot. So when you refer to the flag, or our flag, it's the United States of America. Now, the U.S. flag, usually, if we were to have one in this room, would be to my right, or to your left. The flag is to its own right. We have a flag. <laughs> okay. Do you have a uh, we'll half the stats? Would be to your right. Yes, correct. It would be over here. Almost. I want to make sure way. that I'm handling it properly. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it doesn't touch the ground. As I was saying, the flag has its own right. And I mean right as far as left and right. The flag is to the right of its own. If you think of a building, when you look at the front of the building, when you walk up and there's flags outside, all right, and you're walking up to the building, the flag is actually on your left. Because if you were to turn around and I'm facing out, the flag would be on my right. So the flag's own right means how it's looking out towards you. Now, the American flag has been around for quite some time, but how many people realize that the American flag actually had 27 different official flags? The 27 different flags started out with the 13 stars and evolved up to 
50 stars. Now, the poem that best describes the US flag was written by Ruth Aperson Roos. And if I may, I'm just going to read you what she wrote about the flag. And it explains a lot. And there's some key points in here that you should uh, take to remember. She speaks. I am the flag of the United States of America. I was born on June 14th, 1777 in Philadelphia. There, the Continental Congress adopted my stars and stripes as a national flag. My 13 stripes alternate red and white with a union of 13 white stars in a field of blue. Representing a new constellation, a new nation dedicated to the personal and religious liberty of mankind. Today, 50 stars signal from our union. The union they refer to is the blue. Thank you. Thank you. My colors symbolize the patriotic ideals and spiritual equalities of the citizens of my country. My red stripes proclaim the fearless courage and integrity of American men and boys and self-sacrifice and devotion of American mothers and daughters. Today, that would include women also. But at the time of this writing, women were not allowed to be in the armed forces. My white stripes stand for liberty and equality for all. My blue is blue of heaven, loyalty, and faith. I represent these eternal principles, liberty, justice, and humanity. humanity excuse me. I embody American freedom, freedom of speech, religion, assembly, the press, and sanctity of my home. I typify the indomitable spirit of determination brought to my land by Christopher Columbus and by all my forefathers, the Pilgrims, the Puritans, settlers at Jamestown and Plymouth. I am as old as my nation. I am a living symbol of my nation's law, the Constitution of the United States and the Bill of Rights. I voice Abraham Lincoln's philosophy, a government of the people by the people, for the people. I stand guard over nation's schools, seedbed of good citizenship, and true patriotism. I am displayed in every schoolroom throughout my nation. Every schoolyard has a flagpole for my display. Daily, thousands upon thousands of boys and girls pledge their allegiance to me and my country. I have my own law. The flag law is public law 829, or the flag code as some refer to it, which defines states my cor correct use and display for all occasions and situations. I have a special day, flag day, June 14th, is set aside to honor my birth. Americans, I am the sacred emblem of your country. I symbolize your birthright, your heritage of liberty, purchased from blood and sorrow. How many people died to make sure our flag stands today? I am your title deed of freedom, which is yours to enjoy and hold in trust for posterity. If you fail to keep this sacred trust, I, if I am mollified or destroyed, you and your children will become slaves and dictators and the this, spots. This Internal vigilance is your piece of freedom. As you see my silhouette against the peaceful skies of my country, remind yourself, I am the flag of your country, that I stand for what you are, no more, no less. Guard me well, lest your freedom perish from earth. Dedicate your lives to the principles for which I stand. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I was created in freedom. I made my first appearance in a battle for human liberty. 
God grant that I may spay, spend eternity in my land of the free and home of the brave, and that I shall be ever known as Old Glory, the flag of the United States of America. If you go back and think about this, the American flag came about because we wanted freedom from religion, we wanted freedom for our right to own property, all of which what the British Empire was trying to take away from us. Our flag and our independence to make this flag took eight years against the British before we finally had our flag as it stands. The flag has evolved, like I said. It has started from 13 stars and gone to 50 stars. Now, out of respect for the flag, the Pledge of Allegiance came about. Now, when the Pledge of Allegiance came about, believe it or not, it was a bunch of school kids that took and put together a bunch of words and stuff, and it was sent out on a bunch of leaflets. These leaflets, the school kids were reciting in the school because there were so many out there and stuff. So it became almost like a habit. That habit later became into law as the Pledge of Allegiance, our proclamation. Now, if I may read the, the Pledge of Allegiance and listen to what it really means as far as respect for our flag. I pledge allegiance. You promise to be loyal to the flag, the symbol of our country, of the United States of America, a nation of 50 states in severe territories, which each with certain rights of its own. So think about it. Our country has its rights, and then it breaks down to the state's rights. But ultimately, the federal rights encompasses everything. And to the republic, a country where people elect representatives and among themselves to make laws for everyone, something that few countries have. We have this freedom. There is a lot that do not. Would you like to be living in uh, Serbia right now? Or maybe Iran or Iraq? One nation under God, a country formed under God whose people are free to believe as they wish. Indivisible, the nation cannot be split into parts with liberty and justice, with freedom and a system of law for every person in this nation, regardless of their differences. So if you really listen to the Pledge of Allegiance, it's doing more than just respecting our flag. It's telling each and every one of us what we are as citizens of the United States of America. And again, I have to stress, United States of America. This is not America flag. This is the United States flag. So many people refer to it as American. Like I said, we have North America, Central, and South. This is the United States of America. When our forefathers born our rights and our civil liberties to say what we please when we want to and how we want to, it's all unraveled within the flag. It stands as a symbol of what we fought so hard with blood and soul and faith to achieve what our country has become. Now, the flag is referred to as Old Glory. Does anybody here know how Old Glory came about? The name Old Glory for the flag. There was a Captain William Driver. He was from Salem, Massachusetts. And he was working aboard the Charles Duggett. And as part of his uh, work and everything, people began to recognize him and stuff. And they presented him with a flag. And the flag had 24 stars. Because like I said, the, the Union has evolved from 13 stars to 50. 
The flag he got had 24 stars. They unraveled it and put it upon his ship. He looked up and says, oh, glory, it's beautiful and treasured. When the Civil War broke out, out of respect for the flag, he took and he hid it because he didn't want it being destroyed or burned. And everybody thought they lost Old Glory. Old Glory was found. <clears throat> he was kind of conniving and smart. He had sewn it between the quilt of his bedspread. And when they asked, where is Old Glory? He actually went back to the quilt, ripped the quilt out, and there was Old Glory, 24 stars. It is now preserved and you can't even take pictures of it because they don't want it breaking down. The flash is so bright, the cloth actually starts to destroy. So it's preserved now at the Library of Congress. Now, we're all here to understand flag etiquette. Those of you that haven't gotten a brochure yet, you know, feel free to come down and get the brochure. If you look at the flag, it tells you how it is broken down into different things as far as where to place it. All right, as I mentioned before, the flag is to my right, okay? It'd be to your left. It's the flag's own right because the flag is looking out at you folks. Just like a public building, the, the building looks out to you. So when they say the flag is at the right, the flag is at its own right. And that's important because a lot of people think that if they're going to stand there out in the audience, that it should be to their right. It's to the flag's own right, which means as the flag looks out to you. A few things that uh, are covered out of etiquette, which are uh, on the American Legion website. The flag should never be dipped to any person or anything, and it is flown upside down when? Does anybody know? In distress. In distress. It's the only time it's flown upside down. The flag should never be used as a drapery or a covering for a speaker's desk. There was political campaigns at one time that would take a table such as what you see here and drape the flag over it as part of their political campaign. The flag code took and squashed that very quickly. That's disrespectful for the flag. The flag should be free flowing at all times. If it is put on a wall, it's gonna be centered with the Union Jack to the right. And again, the Union Jack is the blue. Bunting of blue, white, and red stripes is available for other purposes. And that's where you'll see like almost like a ribbon. The blue should always be on the top because the Union Jack, again, should face upwards with the red and white below it. The flag should never be used for advertising purposes. Now, we all know because of freedom of speech, a lot of folks do what they want. And the flag is used for a lot of things that is disrespectful, but we have our country and our symbol to give us that freedom of speech. So they don't enforce it by law. The flag should never be used for advertising purposes, as I said, it should not be embroidered. In other words, you shouldn't put your initials on it. You shouldn't write on it. You shouldn't uh, use it as handkerchiefs um, or a costume are an athletic uniform, except a flag patch can be put on a uniform. Now, the patch, not to go off a little bit, but if you look at the patch on my shoulder, what do you notice about the patch? You got it almost right, you're saying it. The Union Jack 
faces as I walk forward. And the reason for that is during Desert Shield, Desert Storm, they had made a mistake. General Swaskov caught it, all right? And they, they were all destroyed. The Union Jack was facing backwards. What that means is you're walking into something. If the flag was reversed, that's almost like saying you're a coward. You've answered defeat. You retreat. So even the patch, the way it's on a uniform, should be placed with the blue facing the direction you're going. It should never be in reverse. So, quick question, and I'm going to pick on you, all right? No, your girlfriend next to you, all right? If this flag was on the other side, what would I do? What's that? No. Anybody? No. The flag would actually be a mirror image. The blue would still face forward, and the stripes would go to my back. So I could not use this patch on the opposite sleeve. The patch would actually be like a mirror image to be placed on the other sleeve with the blue or the Union Jack facing towards you, and the stripes going behind. Now, that being said, if a flag is on a street, there's two things you need to know. The Union Jack needs to face a certain direction at all times, all right? It needs to face north and east, all right? So that's more or less with the flag code so that everybody has dignified the same respect and the same uniform as Otherwise, you'd be going down the street, the flags would be all back and forth, and it would be disrespectful because it would be so disorganized. Now, if, say this flag was a state flag. If this was a state flag, and I wanted to cross these, how do you think I should cross them? Correct. The staff of the American flag would go in front and the state flag would cross in the back. Because the American flag takes precedence over the state flag. Now, if you're marching down the street and the flag is on what side? Now, we went over this a few times now. That's right, yeah, right side. To the right, all right? Is there anything that should be to the right of the flag in a parade? It's a trick question. There should be no other flags to it, but an armed guard or a soldier carrying a weapon may be to the right. That is the only thing. Now, the flag is to my right, right here. Does anybody know what breaking colors mean? Breaking colors is very disrespectful. If you're in the service and you break colors, your commander is going to let you know. You're probably going to get extra duty. Breaking colors means the speaker or whoever has placed that flag I'm the speaker in this case. My American flag or the US, United States flag is right here. All right, breaking colors would be to walk between the flag and myself. It's not disrespecting me, but it's disrespecting why the flag's there for the presentation. So you do not break colors. If there, you were to leave right now, Breaking colors would be walking here and out the door. So the proper way to not break colors if, say, somebody wanted to get up and go to the bathroom would be to walk to the other side of the flag and out the door. This way, you're showing respect to the flag and not breaking colors. Now, a flag is used to cover one thing and one thing only. 
Does anybody know? A casket. A casket, correct. All right. The union, again the blue, is placed to the left or over the heart and head of the body with inside the casket. That being said, when the body is lowered into the ground, what happens to the flag? Correct. That's the position of the flag. There's other things that some don't realize. The flag only goes over a coffin. And a lot of sports players, and you'll see it quite often, will take the flag and they'll start running around the field or they'll wrap themselves in the flag and stuff. We have freedom of speech. People are going to frown. People are going to say it's wrong. But you're not going to be arrested or anything. People are just going to tell you, hey, look, have some respect. The respect generates from the people we've lost to protect this. And I won't go too far into just those that I've lost with 117 relatives in the service before I came to this point. I've lost quite a bit. And it still brings a tear to my eye to think about what that flag stands for and why we're here today. That is everybody's flag. That's not my flag. That's our flag. And the our is what we have to remember. That's our flag. That's what we stand for. That's what this nation stands for. Okay, the American Legion starts to play at a ball game. When and what should you do? Stand up. All right, you got bits and pieces of it. All right, I am in uniform. And the way it represents is anything that represents the government, which would be police, fire, military, they do not uncap. All right, anybody that is in civilian clothes with a cap would uncap. They would take the cap and place it over their heart. The cap is actually almost touching the left shoulder. So the cap is actually in your hand with the part that your head goes inside of closed against your chest. That is to show respect. How long should you hold that salute when the, American, uh, when the national anthem is playing? To the, end. to the last note. In the military, they will say, you know, present arms, order arms. That salute doesn't drop until you'll hear the military sergeant of arms say, order arms. Then the military are allowed to drop it. They actually wait beyond the last note because they want to do it in uniform or all together to show respect. Now, there are certain holidays to display your flag by proclamation. Proclamation is where Congress gets together, and then the senators vote on it also, and they actually decide on what's going to be presented as a guideline. The holidays, when I read through this, see if anybody picks it out, and I'll explain why. These are the holidays, New Year's Day, Inauguration Day. That means when the president or a lot of times governors. Martin Luther King's Day, which didn't come about until later. That didn't start out that way. Lincoln's birthday, Washington's birthday, which are now combined for President's Day. Easter Sunday, Patriot's Day, which is April 19th. National Day of Prayer, the first Thursday of May, Mother's Day, Armed Forces Day, Memorial Day, and let me stop there on Memorial Day. 
There's something significant about this one holiday that doesn't happen on any other day, about the flag. Does anybody know? Very good. See, he was former Navy, so he does know. And what he just said is, the flag is presented to half mass because of Memorial Day until noon. At noon time, it goes back up to the top of the flagpole. Now, if a flag's at half mask, all right, the first thing you do if you're going to retire the colors at night, if it stayed at half, you have to go to the top and then bring it down to retire it. All right, but on Memorial Day, at sunrise to noon, it goes to half mass. At noon, it goes back up to the top of the mass. Okay, Flag Day, Independence Day, which is July 4th, Labor Day, Constitution Day, Columbus Day, October 12th, Navy Day, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving Day, Christmas Day, and Election Days. Now, what is missing there? When we went through the list, you heard Mother's Day. No Father's Day. Why do you think that happened? Was that Professor? No Father the Veteran. Correct. When this was de uh, designed through the proclamation, most, most fathers are veterans, or most males of the family ended up uh, displaying the flag anyway, due to the, the uh, patriotism of the way our country was built. So Father's Day never became part of the list of the holidays. Now, by law and proclamation also, the flag can only fly 24 hours a day in certain places, although because of our freedom of speech, out of patriotism, you can do it anywhere. But these are the only ones that are actually listed on the book. Fort McHenry National Monument and Historic Sh Shrine, Flag House Square, which is Baltimore, Maryland, United States Marine Corps, Iwo Jima. And we all know the famous stand there with the soldiers trying to bring the flag up. On the town green of Lexington, Massachusetts, the White House, Washington, D.C., Washington Monument, United States Customs Port of Entry, grounds of the National Memorial Arch in Valley Forge State Park. Now, these say 24 hours a day. Out of etiquette and respect, how should the flag be done 24 hours a day? Correct. Uh, it should be lighted. The flag, whenever it's displayed, should be easily recognizable. What that means is, as the sun sets, if you cannot see the flag because it's in shadows, it should be retired. And when they say retired, that means taken down off the flagpole. All right? And you'll hear that term a lot, retire the flag. That means to retrieve the flag. Now, is there anything else that should be taken into the criteria when the flag is flown 24 hours a day? He's right. That's exactly what I'm looking for. You know, you're talking to an old naval vet that, you know, he knows all the ins and outs. The Navy really drills it into you because they have more than just the American flag to deal with. They have signal flags and everything else hanging from their rigging. And they, they actually tell you the weather on those signal flags. Anyways, the flag, if it's going to be in inclement weather, has to be of a material that will withstand the weather. So if it's a you know, heavy cloth flag or cotton, it's going to get soaked. The flag should be retrieved, even if it's daylight out of respect for the flag. And again, it goes back to honor those that died for what it stands for, those that died for what our country stands for. 
They all go together. Remember, this is not representing just a flag. This is representing our way of life, our freedom. Now, the Star Spangled Banner flag, okay? Does anybody know what the Star Spangled Banner flag had for stars? Everybody thinks it was 13 stars. It had 15. The Star Spangled Banner flag was May 1st, 1795. The 13 stars of that flag were from 19, 1791. And when Kentucky and uh, Vermont became the 14th and 15th, all right, that's how it became 15 stars. And they became, respectively, in 1791 and 1792. So by the time the term got coined the Star Spangled Flag, it had 15 stars, not 13. That is the longest flying flag, other than the 50 star flag we have today. And we actually had five presidents under that flag. Now, we have a lot of things that happen in our country. One of the things that has happened, if, how many know the governor of New Jersey? Christie, correct. He did something that was disrespectful for, to the flag, and he didn't even realize it. How many of you remember when uh, Whitney Moore, uh, Whitney died? Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston, thank you. Whitney Houston died. What did he do? He took the flag to half mass. And then when the famous jazz player died, all right? Louis Armstrong, he put it to half mask. That, and in Pennsylvania, the governor did the same thing for a celebrity. The reason this is wrong, think about it this way. A veteran dies, or the president dies, do they get an Emmy or a Grammy? All right? So if we're not getting an Emmy or a Grammy when we die, why should the flag be lowered to half mass when they die? The flag is lowered to half mass for government officials and military. All right? It is not supposed to be lowered to half mass for celebrities. They have other awards and everything to honor them. This is due to the respect of how the flag came about and what it stands for. So at this time, I'd like to ask if anybody has any questions. Um, you gotta forgive me, uh, about a year ago I had a stroke. I'm still recovering slightly from the stroke, so some of my words I trip on, all right? I try my best, I thank you for your time and everything, and for your patience with the way I talk sometimes. But any questions at all about the American flag? I didn't hear why on Memorial Day it goes half Memorial Day, it goes to half mass till noontime and stuff, and then goes back up. Because, because it represents the dead, all right? And then at noontime and stuff, it goes back to the full mask to represent the fact that we've honored our dead and we're going to continue. All right? Uh, within the last year or so, uh, and I'm looking at this brochure with uh, uh, the uh, Matter of respect, uh, either to the national anthem or to the passing flag, that veterans in civilian clothes now have an option of saluting whether or not they have headgear. That is correct. Thank you. Um, originally, veterans would only salute if I was to salute the flag. I would face the flag, and it'd be over my eyebrow, and I'd look at the flag. I would do not take the cap off. All right. They changed that to the point where if I'm not in uniform and I'm a veteran, I can do it now and salute with no cap on and in civilian clothes as an option. Most veterans still 
do it the old-fashioned way and put the hand over the heart. All right. It really depends on what you feel comfortable with. I came from old school in 30 years, so I think I'd still put my hand over the heart if I wasn't in uniform. Any other questions? That's, that's a very good point. If the flag touches the ground, the flag is supposed to be retired and destroyed, all right? The flag touching the ground is almost like a signal of defeat or retreat. Now, to take a flag that's damaged or worn out beyond repair, all right, you can mend it, you can have it dry clean, but if it's beyond repair, they have burning ceremonies that are authorized, usually at VFWs, Boy Scouts, American Legions, and they'll actually have a ceremony. The flag is to be destroyed in a dignified way. There was a law that comes to mind, whereas if you burnt the flag, you were imprisoned for one year. That law was repealed because it invoked into our freedom of speech. So our government decided that, yes, it's very hurtful to burn the flag as a protest, which was very common during the Vietnam protest. But because of our freedom of speech and what the flag really stands for, it was kind of hard to imprison somebody by invoking their freedom. So the law was repealed. So don't burn the flag in front of me out of disrespect because you're still going to have a lot of veterans like myself and Professor Pelletier. We're going to say something. And I know he will. Just look at that smirk on his face. All right. Now, we're basically over. I don't see any more questions. This is just for your own benefit. How many people realize when you fold the flag into a triangle, what it stands for. Each fold represents something. The 13. No, I don't know. <laughs> You're close. The 13th is actually when it's handed to somebody. There's only 12 folds. So the 13th represents the first 13 colonies? There's, the flag is stretched out flat. It's folded in half. And it, when it's folded in half, it ends up with the stars of the Union Jack folded in half and stuff. And then you start the triangular folds, which basically, as it's in a narrow line, you fold it in triangles and flip it back and forth. I'm trying to get to the part where it actually tells you what each fold. All right. There's a diagram in the brochure. Uh, yeah, but it, does it explain each fold? No, it doesn't. Okay. The fold, all right, this is by the actual honor guard. And the honor guard at um, Arlington National Cemetery, there is somebody there. He, he is sworn to a lifetime of no alcohol. He's sworn to a lifetime of obedience towards doing his job as the honor guard for the National Arlington uh, Cemetery. They came up with the fold for each flag and what it stands for. The first fold of our flag is a symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in eternal life. Now, eternal life can mean many things. It means the continuance of our freedom, our continuance of a superior being, and that we're going to live on with our memories. Or our children will live on with the memory of us. The third fold is made of an honor and remembrance of the vet veteran departing our ranks who gave a portion of his life to the defense of our country to obtain peace throughout the world. And if you think about it, the United States has become the policeman of the world. The fourth fold represents the weaker nation as for American citizens trusting in God, it is to him we turn in times of peace 
as well as in time of war, for his divine guidance. What that's saying is our flag always respects what we feel God would want us to do. So the divine guidance, the divine guidance doesn't mean our Congress. Because we've had a few that have been, you know, how the hell did they get elected? The fifth fold is a tribute to our country. For in the words of Stephen Decay, our country is dealing with other countries. May she always be right, but it is still our country, right or wrong. So although you may not disagree with everything our country does, our flag still represents what it represents. Just because some senator or congressman did something that may embarrass our country, it doesn't embarrass our flag. And that's important to remember because our flag still stands for what it stands for no matter what a politician does. The sixth fold is for where our hearts lie. It is with our heart we pledge allegiance to the flag. And we are the only nation in the world that pledge allegiance to a flag. There's no other country that does it. But we do it for our beliefs, not because we're a dictatorship. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces. For it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all enemies, whether it be found within our own borders or elsewhere. And we've had a few homegrown terrorists. And when you give the oath to join the service, it's both foreign and domestic that you're protecting our flag from. One of the greatest domestic enemies was during the uh, Civil War. And they actually came up with their own flag, Confederate States. From 1861 to 1865, there was a Confederate flag. That was not the United States flag because they considered themselves a separate nation. In other words, they didn't believe they were part of the United States at that time. The Eightfold is a tribute to the one who entered in the valley of the shadow of our death. Ah, excuse me. And that we might see the light of day and to honor mother from whom it flies on Mother's Day. The ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood. For it has been through their faith, love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of men and women who have made this country great have been molded. The tenth fold is a tribute to our father. For he too was given his sons and daughters for defense of our country ever since they were first born. The eleventh fold is in the eyes of a Hebrew citizen, re represents the lower portion of the seal of the King David and King Solomon, and glorifies in their eyes God of Abraham, Isaac, The twelfth fold is the eyes of the Christian citizen, re represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies in their eyes God the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. When the flag is completely folded, the stars are uppermost, reminding us of our nation's motto, in God we trust. Our forefathers fought for religious freedom. That is why the pilgrims first left Britain. That is why our flag has so much faith. Our country doesn't care what faith you believe in. Even if you're atheist, all they ask is you believe in the ideals of why the flag is represented, why it is respected, and why it stands today. And to never forget those that have died to make us a country that we are today. If that's it, you folks are free to leave, and I thank you for your presence.